Hello, and welcome to the latest episode of How to Draw Awesome Animals with your friends at Peppermint Narwhal. This is the video series where we teach how to draw animals in a fun and simple way while we share facts about the species as we go along. So today's animal that we'll be drawing is the ring-tailed lemur. So the ring-tailed lemur is, of course, its common name, and below that in the parentheses you can see its scientific name, and below that you see its conservation status. And unfortunately, like many lemur species, the ring-tailed lemur is endangered, so we definitely have some conservation work to do for this species and for many other lemur species as well. So I'll get this out of the way, and we'll go ahead and get started with our drawing. And again, today, uh, like all days that I've been doing these video series, I'll be using pencil and paper. I'm gonna teach you a drawing method that is essentially, I think, the easiest way for somebody of any skill level, uh, regardless of if you're a bit experienced with drawing or comfortable with it or new to it all together, uh, I use a dot-to-dot -dot technique. So I'll put two dots on a page. When you see that, that's basically a straight line, just like your traditional dot-to-dot. -dot. So there I've got two dots. Go ahead and connect them with a very simple straight line. So we've all done that before, pretty straightforward. The one thing I'm gonna mix in, and we'll do it regularly when we draw animals, is a curve line. And because a lot of animals are organic, there's certainly, or animals are organic, there's certainly gonna be a lot of curves in their uh, design. So to do curves, we're gonna do three dots. And the reason we do three dots is to make that middle dot sort of serve as the arch of the curve. So there we go, we've got that nice thing to aim at as we work our curve line. So you kind of come up to that and then start working your way back down. So there we go simple curve line and the three dots kind of help us get it going in the right direction. All right, now we're gonna repeat this process on the opposite side, kind of what we just did. We're basically mirroring it. So I've got two dots there, just like I did before. So now whenever you see me do two dots on a page, you can assume I'll be doing a straight line. And when you see again, the three dots, a lot of times I'll be picking up that where I left off on the last dot. So adding two more makes three you'll know that we're doing a curve line, just like that. So sometimes I'll be throwing out some animal facts and uh, you know, you'll just basically have that direction now, two dots, straight line, three dots, curve line. All right, so we'll go ahead and move our way to the interior here. And I'm gonna put a dot there. I'm gonna put a dot there. And of course that's a straight line. There we go. And this time I'm gonna come to the left side Use the top dot. A lot of times, like I said, I'll be coming to where I left off. So there's another simple straight line. And then this time we're going to add two more and come back to that original one where we left off, making three and make a nice kind of curved line down just like that. Okay, so now I've got this end dot and this dot sort of open and I can just draw a nice straight line to connect those back together. I'm gonna to repeat this process now on this opposite side here. So there we go, we got two dots there. And then we've got another dot added, leaving off with the original, that's two. And then there's a dot there that we'll come leave and start with, and then adding two more makes three. So there we go. All right, and now that these two are just left open, same thing as the other side, we're just connecting them. So essentially what we're doing is we're creating the face or the head of our uh, lemur. And now that we've got the sort of eyes, um, the masks around the eyes, we'll go ahead and put the eyes in. And we're going to put them in the center using just a simple oval. And you might want to watch me do this here on this side. So there we go. And I'm going to put the other one again right on the sort of mirroring it on this side. There we go, right in that interior spot. And I like to darken those ovals in and leave a little bit of the white of the paper. So it's almost like a little hint of a mini oval that I don't color in inside of that. But I darken all the rest. And that little bit of white will give it a little more character or personality. It looks like a nice highlight, uh, a little more natural. All right, so there we go. We've got the eyes coming together. We'll go ahead and put two dots right below those masks for a straight line. And then on the left side of that, I'm just gonna make a dot right below it. And we'll come down with a straight line. And then on this side, kind of repeat that same process. There we go, as we put in the nose, okay? And now we've got two dots on either side of those. That's the dots we're going to be using in this part. And then in the middle, uh, pretty close to those, uh, but a little bit down, I added uh, a third dot. So there we go, we got just sort of rounding that off the bottom. And there we go, we got our nose. And I'm just gonna kind of color that in. And I'll leave a little hint of 
a little oval that I didn't color in, just kind of capture a little bit of highlight there. So there we go. It's not necessary if you colored it all in, this part uh, doesn't matter as much. Okay, so there we go, we've got the nose, right below the bottom of the nose, is, I have a dot down there that I'm gonna use that dot. And right below it, I'm just gonna make a, another dot for a very short straight line, there we go. And now this dot in the middle is gonna be my starting dot, uh, or at the bottom here is gonna be my starting dot. I'm gonna put a dot out here and a dot back up to the nose there on the back side. And we're gonna make a nice curving line here. And again, sometimes you can go either direction, go back and forth, as long as you kind of use that middle dot to get the arch of your curve. So there we go, I've got a nice happy lemur face starting to come together. All right, coming back to this middle dot, we're repeating the process on this side. There we go, three dots, curving that line up nicely there. Okay, so there's our happy face lemur. We'll go ahead and put a dot right at the bridge of the nose here between the eyes. And then we're gonna put a dot kind of right out here on the side uh, where the sort of cheek left off. And we'll just draw a nice kind of straight line there. And then we'll kind of use this top dot again, but this time put the dot on the opposite side. And again, a simple straight line kind of bringing that down. So there we go. So our face is starting to come together. I'm gonna to put a chin on this guy. So we've got dots that, let's make a dot essentially right in the middle uh, of this arch of the muzzle on either side. So picture a dot here, picture a dot there, you know, a dot in the middle, and then there you can see a nice curving straight line creates a nice chin for our head. All right, that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to come to the top of the head here and I'm going to put a dot here, a dot here, and a dot here. We're kind of doing the crown of the head. So there's three dots. Looks pretty good. That looks fine. And now uh, we're going to, from this end point here, we'll put a dot here. And just kind of bring that in with a straight line. And from that end point here, I'll do the same thing over here. Just a nice simple straight line. And then I'm gonna use those two dots as uh, dots in this part of the drawing and add a one in the middle to make three. So that's gonna be my arch of the curve. And I'm just gonna kinda, of... so now I've got this shape up here and I'm just gonna color that in, darken it in. And I can be a little, you don't have to worry about going outside the lines a little bit because this is actually just a little bit of darker fur that you would see at the crown of the head. So that looks good. Now we're gonna put the ear on. So we're gonna use this dot here or this end point here and I'll put a dot out here and just make a nice straight line. Now this part I'm gonna do very lightly, this next part, because I actually wanna sort of add detail later um, afterwards. So I just wanna go over, I'll get the basic shape. So I've got this dot up here. I'm gonna put a dot here, and I'm gonna put a dot here. So there's a curved line, but I'm gonna draw very lightly with the pencil, just to kind of get the shape in there. So the reason uh, you use pencil a lot of times is you kind of draw lightly. In fact, most people when they're drawing uh, are always sort of starting off drawing very lightly, sort of feeling out the shape. And then once they kind of got it, then they add uh, more detail and darken as they go. So now that we've got the basic shape of the ear, they have very tufted, furry, hairy ears. So I'm going to capture that by sort of making jagged lines. So you might want to watch me do this, but it's almost like drawing blades of grass uh, or just up down V sort of shapes. So here we go, we've got this sort of adding a few of those blades of grass looking shapes, just to sort of make the ear a little more tufted and a little more uh, furry, hairy. So there we go, we'll do the same thing on this side. Got two dots for a straight line to get the sort of top of the ear. And then this time using that end point, again, remember we're gonna go very lightly with these dots in this line here, just kind of block out the overall shape. Now that I've got that, I'm gonna sort of make my hairy tufted ears of this lemur. So that looks pretty good. So right now I'm going to go ahead and put uh, some uh, inside ear here. So I'm going to just sort of put two dots there for a straight line. And now I'm going to do a dot down, bring it down, dot up, bring it back up. And this time using that end point, adding two more for a curve line to kind of bring it back. And I'm going to repeat the process on this other side here Get a straight line, bring it down with the dot, dot up, bring it up, and then add two more dots from the end point to get a nice curve. All right, so these uh, we're gonna darken into, just like this. And that's gonna be the darker inner part of the ear. So that looks pretty good. 
And now we're also going to darken in these masks area here. But since I've already got a nose and eyes in there, I don't want to darken it the same level of uh, and, uh, shading because it'll dis the eyes will disappear. So I'm just going to go a little bit lighter. Again, another value of the pencil is I can do that nice sort of just putting less pressure down makes a lighter gray. And by doing that, it shows that it's definitely a darker color, but it allows the nose and the eyes to stay in focus and have enough contrast to stand out. So there we go. We've got that nice sort of ring-tailed lemur face coming together here. So now I'm going to put on this, uh, just a little bit of a neck here. And uh, to do that, I've got three dots there. And again, like I said, I've, I've, it, you're now well into the drawing. So, you know, three dots is a curve, two dots, straight line. You're going to be seeing probably a lot more curve lines than, than uh, straight lines. Again, when you're drawing animals, curve lines are kind of the norm. So we've got that big back shape here that we're doing. Now, lemurs, of course, are uh, fascinating animals. They're all found on the island of Madagascar. Um, and there's over 100 species of lemurs, including this ring-tailed lemur that we're drawing today. So there's uh, all ranging in various different sizes and adaptations. In fact, uh, we'll talk about some unique aspects that the ring-tailed lemur has versus other lemurs. So I've got three dots here for this backside area. So the ring-tailed lemur, uh, like I said, is unique in a number of ways. Uh, got three dots going under here. The ring-tailed lemur has its own genus all to itself, uh, and that is actually called the lemur genus. So even though there are over a hundred lemur species, only one is in the genus lemur, and that's the ring-tailed lemur. And the uh, ring-tailed lemur is also unique. I'm going to put a dot up here, and I'm going to put a dot down here. And even though that looks like a dot for three, it's not. It's left over from the other one, so this is a straight line. So the ring-tailed lemur is very unique to other lemurs in that most lemurs are what you'd call arboreal, which means they spend most of their time in the trees or they're highly adapted for tree life. Whereas the ring-tailed lemur certainly can go in a tree and does spend some time in trees. It actually spends most of its time on the ground and they've adapted to uh, be sort of moving on the ground a lot. And part of that's uh, due to the fact that where they live is essentially a very dry sort of semi-arid to arid region. And uh, they're the, the, the sort of tree life is a little more scrub and sparse. So there's not that sort of heavy rainforest trees where you can just drop, jump from one tree to another because they're all so close. So these guys have adapted to living uh, a very sort of more ground-based life. Uh, and we'll talk about uh, how they've done that successfully. So now that I've got this sort of front leg here, I'm going to put a dot down here and a dot here. And there we go, another straight line. So we're going to be doing some straight lines here. It's two little dots real close together. And then another left off where we left off, getting a straight line there. Okay, so here we're going to two dots, straight line. So like I said, these guys are uh, highly uh, adapted to spending time now on the ground. And, oops, I'm getting ahead of myself, sorry. Two dots here, we'll just connect that. And then two dots here, sorry, sometimes I... I talk about facts, I just start shifting to that automatic part of the drawing, but I'm trying to do it so that you can see what I'm doing. So there's two dots, straight line. We got two now here, I'll put a dot here. So I said these guys are highly adapted for ground life, and the way they do that is they live in large groups. So by being in a large group, you can sort of walk around on the ground and then kind of keep your eye out for predators. You can also keep your eye out for opportunities, safe places to sleep and eat, find food. You can share food. Now that I've got a little hand here, I'm just going to put on some, uh, you might just want to watch me do this, but I'm basically just doing straight lines to make the fingers. So they have hands very similar to like us because they are members of the primate family. They're, uh, you know, more simple primate, but uh, they their hands will look, if you look at a lemur hand, it'll look very similar to yours. So I'm just putting some straight lines here for that. So I said they live in these groups, uh, and these groups are able to then kind of watch out for each other, protect each other. Um, it's easier to find a mate when you're all together. So you have a sort of social order. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, how the lemurs sort of, you know, are able to uh, protect themselves and keep up with, uh, you know, sharing resources and finding places to stay. So uh, group environments certainly have 
uh, benefits and a lot of primates uh, sort of have evolved to uh, be social and by being social they're able to kind of it's an adaptation strategy so some social animals now uh, have they share resources and they uh, cooperate together and by doing that uh, they increase their odds for survival as opposed to if they had to do that all by themselves there's three dots here looking on that back leg area here all right, so this is looking pretty good. Now, a fun little, I got a dot here. I'm gonna extend this down for a straight line and I'll extend this one down a little bit, straight line. So another uh, fun thing about a group of lemurs is it has a fun name, it's called a conspiracy. So a conspiracy of lemurs is any sort of lemur group that would be more than three or more. And certainly in these uh, sort of conspiracies that they live or these large groups that they live in, uh, you'll see uh, quite a number of lemurs all together. So I'm putting on this back leg here. We got the toe, the thumb, or sorry, the yeah, the big toe there. And now I've got just a sort of straight line, similar to how we did the front leg, although it's a little bit of a bigger, bigger uh, uh, back foot. We're kind of making that same sort of uh, simplified shapes here so that I can help you get those feet down. So now that we've got two dots here, I'll put one in the middle, round that back off. And then I'm just gonna kind of put on those toes by just essentially kind of drawing these lines here in between. And there's those, if you wanna round them off at the end, you can add a little details to it if you have the room for it. So there we go, we've got the hands and feet down there. All right, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put another foot on the other side. We're not seeing much of this, so we'll put that down here. So we said, again, these guys are primates. Uh, we, we know that uh, there are uh, other types of primates like apes and uh, gibbons and monkeys, of course. And uh, the lemurs are a very unique group of primates because they sort of evolved on their own little island, uh, that island of Madagascar. And uh, eventually, or at one point, that island of Madagascar was essentially connected to Africa. And that's where all these uh, sort of primates were all on one big sort of land mass. But as it split off, the primates that ended up being sort of uh, stuck on this island of Madagascar sort of went in a very different direction evolution-wise than the island uh, or than the animal primates that stayed on the mainland. So that's sort of why we see these uh, sort of uniqueness with these primates uh, on Madagascar. So that's the reason that sort of happened is something called uh, plate tectonics. I got a thumb here. I'm just going to sort of, or a you know back toe, big toe. So I'm just rounding that off. And from this inside here, put a dot there or have a dot there. So I'll just extend that a little bit. Dot here, just kind of extend that a little bit. And then use these three dots to round it off. So they, essentially, uh, the reason that, uh, now that I've got that, I'm gonna put the toes on with these sort of just subtle curving lines there, just three of them. You're not gonna see all of them there. So there we go. And I'm gonna put another one on the front side here. So there we go, got a nice straight line there. And what happened was the, the reason that that Madagascar separated from Africa was something called plate tectonics. So if you, if you sort of see the earth, uh, or if you study a model of the earth where you can actually see the layers of the earth cut open, maybe in your, your member back in class, or if you, uh, you have a model of the earth where you see the cut open parts of the earth, uh, it's a molten sort of center. So it's fluid and uh, it sort of moves around. And so essentially the crust is floating on top of this sort of molten center. And by doing that, uh, things move around, things shift. If you look at different parts, like when the dinosaurs were uh, here on the planet, the continents were very different looking than they are today. Uh, and that's because of this this phenomenon called plate tectonics. Sorry, I got uh, a little ahead of myself, but essentially drawing two straight lines here. So there's two dots there. There's two dots there. Sorry, I wasn't trying to mess with you there. And then I'm just going to kind of round that off for that thumb there. And then over here, we'll put a dot. So essentially, these the continental crust is floating on top of this you know, mantle of uh, molten magma. So in, in doing that, we're going to see uh, a little bit of, uh, oops, one second. Yeah, I'm gonna wait with that dot. We're gonna come back to this side here, just extend that down a little bit. Put a dot there, getting a little ahead of myself again. So, but essentially there, there's this plate tectonics where things move around. So there we go, kind of bring that back. And I'll just kind of put a couple of these 
because there are curved lines there. So there we go. I've got our, our, our arms and our legs all sort of in place. Now we're going to sort of put the, the tail on. And this is going to be a lot of curving, line, a lot of three dots here. So you're just going to watch them flow along. So like I said, these the plate tectonics, we have, uh, you know, the, the land masses move. Madagascar was once connected to the continent of Africa. It's separated, so the primates evolved very differently there than they did on the mainland. And that's why you have these sort of very unique lemur species. And the thing that's interesting about uh, uh, Madagascar is all these lemurs are kind of fitting their own niches. So we have uh, something like the ring-tailed lemur now being an animal that, you know, once maybe spent more time in the trees, kind of moving to a lifestyle on the la on, on sort of the ground. Uh, and they're sort of carving out a niche. And then you have uh, some small lemurs. Uh, there's mouse lemurs. There's some lemurs that don't have tails. So they're, they're all sort of evolving into their own very unique sort of aspects of the environment that they live in and how they're thriving within that. So basically, uh, you'll see different adaptations in all the different species. So you have some lemurs, like the injury lemur, which is uh, the biggest lemur. And then you'll have, you know, the, the Madame Berthy's mouse lemur, which is the smallest lemur. And there is a big difference in size on those. So you can see these lemurs are all sort of going in very different, unique uh, evolutionary directions. The, the big challenge for lemurs, though, uh, is really us. And, you know, the, the fact that uh, we tend to alter their habitat a lot. We tend to kind of claim uh, a lot of land and resources, and in doing so, we kind of cause fragmentation for species. Uh, Madagascar is a big island, but, uh, you know, in comparison, when you start carving up all the resources, uh, you know, we can certainly grab most of them, and then that doesn't leave a lot for uh, the animals. So we've got to kind of find a way to sort of use resources that we need uh, without sort of, you know, taking away everything from uh, everybody else that lives on this same sort of uh, big planet with us. So there we go. We've got this nice tail here. And what I'm going to do now is we call this the ring-tailed lemur. So certainly they have what's uh, banding or rings on this. And to do these, I'm going to basically do this sort of V-shaped, almost like drawing mountain ranges, uh, you know, jagged up-down sort of V-shapes to get the various bands. Just you can't really get this wrong. You know, just give them a decent amount of spacing so that way you can get that nice uh, alternating dark light color patterns. So animals with, uh, you know, there's a lot of animals that have this kind of banding colors. And uh, that's been sort of studied recently trying to figure out how many animals in various different animal groups all sort of evolve this sort of uh, banding. You can see it in everything from raccoons, which are very unrelated to lemurs or other primates. You can see it in red pandas. They're very different and quadimundis. So you have all these different animals in all these different parts of the uh, world. By the way, now that I've got these bands, I'm going to start with the, the one at the tip and darken it, and I'm alternating darkening them in. So one of the things they discovered is, you know, a lot of animals that evolve you know, big tails, especially when they're arboreal, that's, uh, tails become sort of a helpful balancing tool. Uh, so if you're arboreal, you live in the trees, that's going to help you out a lot. Uh, if you run a lot and, you know, you need a counterbalance, uh, you're going to have a, a big tail. You see that in cats. So, but, you know, in the tree animals, uh, they've sort of evolved these big tails a lot of times for, um, you know, balance and counterbalancing. But since they have this big real estate, uh, they've been able to also use it as a form of communication because oftentimes the tail is so big and it's used to counterbalance the whole body, uh, it can also then become used for communication. And that's really where this banding uh, scientists and researchers have recently said uh, they believe it's evolved to a uh, form of a communication. So that it really stands off. Striped things like this are going to stand out to a species or animal. So an animal that wants to communicate with its group or a conspiracy can wave this tail a lot of times when you see lemurs on the ground, uh, you know, and they're alerted, they'll pop their tails up and they'll they'll sort of flick, flick them a little bit and they'll stay real high and then they'll start running away. So everybody kind of knows, oh, that gesture means uh, we need to get going. We need to pick up the pace. We need to get out of here. So that's where these uh, banding that you see in all these different animals in all the different parts of the animal kingdom that aren't related, it's something called convergent evolution because a lot of animals come to the same conclusion of, of benefit and that benefit is communication is also how they're using this tail. So the tail sort of the ring-tailed lemur maybe began in the trees. The banding sort of becomes a form of communication. Now, of course, this lemur spends most of its time on the ground. 
But again, we've had a lot of fun drawing it with you and sharing some fun facts about this specific lemur and about all lemurs. We'd love to see how your drawings turned out. Remember, if you want to share them with us, you can put, share it with us on our social media using the hashtag Minty Sketch. If you like this video, please give it a like. It helps the channel and we appreciate it. It also lets us know how you think of these videos. Feel free to comment as well. And again, if you want to follow along with this series, please uh, ring the bell, subscribe to the channel. that will keep you up to date on any new videos that we post. We look forward to seeing you back here on another episode of How to Draw Awesome Animals with your friends at Peppermint Narwhal. Have a great day.